Welcome to Under the Fig Tree Podcast. In today's episode, hosts Rev. Micah Glenn and Rev. Dr. Ben Hout talk theology and life as they meditate under the fig tree. What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Under the Fig Tree Podcast. I am your host, Rev. Micah Glenn, Director of Recruitment here at Concordia Seminary. As always, at least for a couple more months and then a break and then we'll see how we all feel after Ben's sabbatical is done if we want him back you'll have to comment and leave a like if not he'll be get voted off the (laughs) island (laughs) Uh, but as always uh joined by reverend dr ben haupt benjamin daniel nope 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 all right certainly not benjamin uh, daniel that was (laughs) good try though good good try next time yep his middle name starts with a D. Eventually, that's that's I'm going right. to guess the right one. That's right. Uh, and I was going to guess another one now, but it's going to be, I'll just guess every episode. Have you ever met my dad? No. Okay. Well, that's... I was about to say, when would I have met your dad? But I guess he's probably visited. And you were thinking, what does that have to do with my middle name? Yeah, but, no, but now I've made the connection. I, there you go. I, we might meet your dad. We'll be going to Fort Wayne not long from now as a team. Yeah, it's possible. I could be a creep and look it up, but that's just too much work. Isn't that what everybody does? It is, but yes. I, I don't. I, Facebook, Facebook stock. I, I, I actually don't do that. Well, okay. I don't have Facebook on my phone. Whenever somebody texts me, sorry, Sam. All right. Uh, we have a guest on we, the show We do today. have a guest today. <laughs> uh, fourth year seminarian, Sam Eisenberg. How are you doing today, bro? Man, I'm blessed. How are you guys doing? We're great. 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 Uh, yeah, for a second, we, we should have introduced you, and then we could have jumped into this conversation because then you probably have some things to say sam how do you feel about social media what's your what's your socials level and and how do you live or not live on social media you know i might check it from time to time perhaps yeah uh and check it what which platforms are you on well generally facebook when i was younger and in high school i was all over instagram and all that other stuff sure but i've just enjoyed being off of it so sometimes no 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 i mean i stay way away from tiktok dancer or nothing like that I, I dance but i don't do tiktok dances okay. man no. okay no lip syncing no none of okay. that okay i there's there's a, a i don't know if it's a tiktok it will has to be a tiktok dance going around right now uh called the juby slide and i i wish i could do it uh, <laughs> you and, could do it come on I, so i don't kid our it, listeners well, anyway it like it's they all know that no I'm, I'm i'm not on tiktok tiktok <laughs> yep <laughs> exactly <laughs> Well, it's called the Juby Slide. Don't listen to like the Juby lyrics slide. of the song. You might not, might. Well, they're not crazy. But there's a song that, of course, every TikTok dance has a song. Yeah. But it's it's a crazy looking dance, and I would 100 percent, if I were a TikToker, I'd, I'd learn. Did how it to do did it. it start as a Fortnite dance? Not this one. I don't. Okay. Uh, I mean, it it looks like it should be on a video game. Yeah. It doesn't look like. It looks like it defies the laws of physics. I'll have to ask my it's, boys. They'll know. It's like the modern age moonwalk. Remember when Michael Jackson first moonwalked? Oh, I don't because yeah. I think – I'm not sure if I was born yet. <laughs> but it's it's on that level of right? how wow. are they doing that. It's crazy. I had I had Michael Jackson's bad on a 45 okay. that I played on my little Fisher Price record player. Wow. Yeah. I was going to make fun so, of you until you mentioned the Fisher Price record yeah. player. And I, I had one, so now I can't. So, oh, I was going to say that that says it all. You you don't need to make fun of me because no. I make fun of myself. No, listen, <laughs> if, if you ever had a Fisher Price record player, you're a real one in my book. Was it, was it the, like, it looked like a briefcase that was white and it, like, opened up and then it. Yeah. Yeah. L- legit. I broke the lid off. Oh. That's good. Kids. And I, I don't I I don't think it was like new to me either though. But I had it and I had because it also came with like those kind of plasticky records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had loop them in that nap time. Well You've say, heard of these things <laughs> called records before, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. There we okay. Go. You've seen them like in antique yeah. stores or something. Yeah, I like it. My wife and I love to go antique shopping. Oh yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but my dad had a whole basement. Uh, he lived in Utah half part of the year. He had a whole basement full of all these like vinyls and everything. Oh, sure. So it's kinda nice. interesting to thumb through some of them. Right. Oh. I mean, these days, I mean, now you're talking Might about antique and if they're in yeah, good shape, especially if the cover is in good shape. Oh, yeah. you're, right. You could get paid. Well, Sam, good for you for not dedicating too much of your time on social so i i Wise don't man. facebook i deleted it from my phone because mm-hmm. I, I don't use it anyway and i check it every once in a while i'm embarrassed to say like if you've ever sent me a 
a Facebook request and I haven't accepted it, it's it's not because I don't like you. I think right now I went gonna, through and accepted be, all, the, all the likes a I, couple couple weeks ago, and I thought, wow, there's there's some that like I know these people really well, and yeah. it was like two years or something. That's <laughs> they, that's what they I was were probably thinking. Oh yeah, he he gave up on me. If I told you the the number of friend requests, I I looked the other day. It's 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 embarrassing. Wow, it, it might be worse than your unread emails. It it might be. My my unread emails are doing doing pretty well these days. Minor, yeah. I'm a little behind. Does, does anybody ever post like something for your birthday and then it takes you a year to get around to it? Oh right, that's yeah. that's my level of usage. <laughs> so yes. so I I might not have this year, but typically, see that's one of those things. I think every August 9th, this I might not have done it this year. I I typically go on general thank you everybody who took the time to yep. wish me yeah. happy birthday yep. because again. I don't do anything else, but if you're going to stop and wish me a happy birthday, the, the least I could do is, like, send out the thank you card. Yeah. But I don't know. I can't remember the last time I posted on Facebook. Is, is YouTube social media? I mean, yeah, it, I think technically, so. Technically. Well, I mean, then, yeah. all the good TikToks go to YouTube, so I would count it as such. All right. Yep, well, then, right. right, I don't have TikTok, but yeah. YouTube shorts. Yes. And you can click on it and scroll. Oh, it's so bad. You can waste a lot of time doing yeah. that. Yeah, I'm out. I'm out on that. That's how. That's, that's how a, I found the Juby slide. <laughs> leave it. Leave it on the tree for me. I can't scroll through. I can't scroll through videos like that. No. No. Oh, uh, you don't have no. your your ADHD I, isn't. I scroll. Isn't I scroll, I scroll through through Twitter. Twitter is my medium of choice. Got it. Yeah. How and do you people, feel about X? Call X now. Oh yeah, yeah. I've heard about that. <laughs> the, yeah, the platform I, formerly I still, known as Twitter. I still call it Twitter. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I actually don't mind Elon Musk, um, but but I also don't hate Republicans and <laughs> people who hate Republicans now hate Twitter because yeah. Elon oh. Musk wants it to be kind of this platform that anybody can talk on. And I think that's fair. I, still, I like a lot of Republicans. Still to this day, I've never tweeted. Wow. wow. Not not one tweet. I, I had it once. I, I think I still have a Twitter account. But uh, I've never I've never used it. I think my most recent tweets, our viewers, listeners won't be surprised. But my Bitcoin. my most recent tweets were Buy uh, celebrating and commemorating the fifteenth anniversary of the Bitcoin white paper. I was close. Wow. Do you know that the Bitcoin white paper was posted on October thirty first? No. Yeah, Satoshi Nakamoto might have been a Lutheran. Mm. We'll never know because we don't know who he is or she is. We should probably talk about Jesus <laughs> and the church. <laughs> Sam, t- rescue this podcast yeah, and tell us a little bit about... You have a very, very interesting story. Yeah. Um, I, I grew up... I, I was baptized in a LCMS church, uh, went to LCMS grade school all the way through STM. That's the second master's degree at seminary. Um, you, you don't have that story, so... Tell us a little bit about your background, um, how it was that you became a Lutheran, and then how it was that you ended up at Concordia Seminary St. Louis. Sure thing. Uh, it all started in a little town in the dirt called Las Vegas, Nevada. You heard of that? May, okay, so you have heard of it because some yeah, people. I put, a, I put a quarter in a <laughs> slot machine one time and won two hundred twenty-five dollars. Ooh, okay. Good for you. New York, yeah, New York. Look at that. Man, did you just walk away? I just walked away. Yeah, I was like walking down the street. I threw my one quarter in. And was like, bang. Whew, the the blue haired ladies were like, oh, honey, that's a really big one. Yep. Cool. And it was when it was when they still shot the quarters out. It wasn't the just the credits. Like yeah. I had to go get several buckets just to take the quarters up. All right, I your am, story. Keep going. I am impressed. You ripped us off. <laughs> Anyways, um, so my dad actually, well, he was born and raised Jewish uh, right. in Northern California in San Francisco. Okay. And so we were his second family. So by the time it came around to us, he married my mom, who was a, well, the first 20 years of her life, she says that she's Southern Baptist. Mm. And then the rest of it, I, all I ever grew up knowing their religious background was simply as Protestant. Okay. Uh, okay. I didn't know what that meant. It sounded kind of neat, but I, I didn't really care. I was definitely on board of, you know, you are, you're Jewish. And my dad insisted that my younger brother and I would be raised Jewish. Mm. So they tried to drag us to Sunday schools. Uh, I Did I, you eat kosher? No. Okay. So that's kind of where it gets interesting. 
uh, we weren't, you know, like the Orthodox Jews that have, you know, that wear the black and the white and have the curly things. Yep. We were at highest, uh, the conservative Jews, okay. Okay. which you see probably most Jewish people in America are conservative Jews right. and or reformed, reformed Jews. Right. Yeah. Um, so no, we didn't eat kosher. Bacon is an amazing first article gift that our great God <laughs> gives us. Uh, so I was very blessed to enjoy that. But that's also part of being in a more blended household. Sure. Um, we celebrated Hanukkah, and then we had, you know, secular Christmas. So you got, like, double the presents? I did. I got to flex on all the Christian kids at school. Yeah. yeah. I'm, that's, that's, that's good. W's, yeah. I, yeah, I was always telling these blended families in Boca Raton, which had a lot of Jewish people, that mm-hmm. they should celebrate both. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if Dad was Jewish and Mom was Lutheran, uh, Lutherans, uh, the New Testament celebrates... Um, many of these Jewish festivals. Yeah. They do. So, yeah. They do. So it was Double a, the gifts. Absolutely. It was a lot of fun. Um, and also, I mean, latkes, uh, my, of course, my dad had two uh, other children, so from his first marriage, so my half-sister, my half-brother. And I'll tell you, you know, Jewish weddings, parties, highly recommend. It's always <laughs> a good time. Uh, Lots so, of wine, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so anyway, um, and we observed this, the Passover, the Seder. Okay. So, mm-hmm. But I guess I didn't really know too much about what it meant to be Jewish besides, well, you're God's chosen people. You mm-hmm. can't do anything wrong. And everyone else out there, especially the Christians, hate you. Oh. And that's kind of the narrative that I believed in. That was the liturgy, so to speak, that mm. I got in a lot of the more you know Jewish circles that I was in, and the impression because automatically the media will tell you that, well, you know the, these Christians are out to get you. Um, but so it's really funny. So I really did not have a favorable view at all about Christianity. Mm. In fact, more antagonistic than anything. Sure. Did you do your um, bar mitzvah? So I was in the middle of bar mitzvah training, but my mom and my dad were divorcing, and. Yep. The instruction was a lot of work, yeah. so I, I understand kids complain about confirmation, but you, I think you might have it pretty easy compared to <laughs> oh, the amount of pressure hey, in nice. familial piety right, that goes behind. Right. You know, uh, oh my goodness, you broke Eisenberg family <laughs> tradition. Ah, my dad did never, never, even until he died, never let me off the hook for that wow. for not getting bar mitzvah. But okay. I didn't, and I see why. I see God's plan more clearly in yeah. that. So my parents divorced when I was in my teenage years, about fifth grade or so. Okay. And I went to, a, I was in a private school, so a secular private school, and then I went to another private school for two years. And then it came time for me to change. I did not like the school I was in. It was important. It served a role. Um, I wanted to go to a magnet school, but my mother said, no, you're going to go back and do a private school. Um, and the option actually was Faith Lutheran Junior Senior High School in Las Vegas, Nevada. Right. Let's go Crusaders. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's largest class. largest Lutheran high school in the country. Right? Largest yes. Lutheran uh, high school in the country, and we're still growing. Yeah, yes, it's amazing. Yeah. So kind of why this is all important is I have this framework of you're Jewish, but that's where the dynamic comes in because even though we bounced between different synagogues at that time, conservative reform, we also stopped for a little bit, particularly when I was younger, was my dad experimented with Messianic Judaism. Hmm. And the Messianic Jews that we were at uh, with Rabbi Shmuel, actually, uh, they were Christians. Hmm. They just held on to a lot of these different Jewish customs. Oh. In fact, uh, he actually converted to Christianity. This hmm. rabbi did. I found yeah. out about a year ago. Hmm. It's kind of interesting. That's kind of an awesome last name. I- Rabbi Shmuel. Shmuel. Like, oh, Shmuel. Yeah, Shmuel. Shmuel. So he has Shmuel, my same. Shmuel, like with an M. Yeah, he has my okay, same Hebrew name. Oh. I thought it was Shwell, like swell with oh. an S-H. He's, he's, a pretty shw- he's a pretty Shwell, shwell guy, guy, I guess, you know? <laughs> but so. Shmuel. you right. Got it, got it, got it. Like, like the Old Testament prophet. Yes, like the Old Testament prophet. And apparently he heard the gospel in Texas hmm. and converted to Christianity, and then he started a Messianic Jewish congregation in Las Vegas where there are a ton of Jewish people in the community yep. uh, as a mission. Sure. So I remember hearing about the sacrifice lamb, but at that point, most of it was still in Hebrew. I had no idea what he was talking about. Mm. But my mom did and thought that that was a good compromise, I guess, at that time. Sure. Uh, don't know. My dad died in 2014 very suddenly. Um, but it was interesting because at that point, I was hearing God's word. The teachers at Faith Lutheran were reading it to me in classes as an introduction to Christianity class. Mm. Um, in 10th grade, I remember I was started to ask more questions. I went on a mission trip actually nice. with there. For, I came with service hours and came back 
was on a lot more. Wow. So it was really incredible. Was Sarah Crowder part of this this journey? She came to the school about my 11th grade year. Okay. So yes, and okay. I went on a few trips with her, and okay. I love the Crowders. Yeah. They're great. Yeah, they're great people, and they get shout-outs every once in a while because yeah. she's good friends with both of us. So. Well, they just got another one. So yeah. uh, nice. it's interesting, though, because seeing the word of God at work in ninth grade, I remember thinking, well, you know, I'm a Jew, and I'm in a Christian school, and people were threatening that the Lutherans particularly were going to crucify me. <laughs> I mean, they told me this before I went to this school, people that were at the school I was at prior to and whatnot, and I didn't know how to feel about it. Um, but it was interesting because it's just seeing how God works through his word and yeah. how he gives us faith. There's no, you don't wake up and you choose Jesus. You don't do that. God does it all. Yeah. And so it's interesting reading the scriptures in that introduction to Christianity class in ninth grade, Isaiah 42 and 53 and Psalm 22, these things that you are not allowed to read in synagogue. Hmm. And oh, yeah. Interesting. If, okay. If you uh. went to any of the, like the conservative or the reformer Orthodox or any synagogue, those passages are actually not found in your little red and blue Torah and half Torah books. It's oh. too controversial. It points too much to Jesus. Got it. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, that's fascinating. It is. Yeah. And it's, it's, it, it, well, fascinating and not like not in an antagonistic way. It's, yeah. It's it's kind of sad. It is. Uh, because a, yeah. I mean, from a Christian perspective, mm -hmm. we. If you are a true believing Christian, yes. you understand the importance of the Old Testament and you understand who God's chosen people were, mm -hmm. uh, kind of fulfilled in Jesus Amen. and how that transformed moving forward. So the antagonism towards Judaism, mm -hmm. of course, it has happened throughout Christianity mm -hmm. and its existence, but those are, well, anyway, we, we don't have to get into the dynamics of that, but yeah. then to take away the suffering servant song yeah. and things that... Yes intentionally point to Jesus from the Old Testament, you can see it fulfilled in him. Yeah, you just sad a little bit because well, what if they did read it and experience it? What yeah. would they think about Jesus then? Right. And what would they think about their lives and their faith? Interesting. Well, anyway. It Psalm 110, is Psalm 110 used? That's, that's um, the Lord said to my Lord, yeah. sit at my right hand. Thing. I don't know specifically that one. I just know for sure. I mean, don't quote me on 42, yeah, but yeah. I know 53, Isaiah, you know, 53 and Psalm 22 are not in, right. are not wow. in most, if not all, you know, yeah. uh, scriptures that you'll find in a Jewish temple. Yeah, that's very, very interesting. So it was interesting as I was reading it and this hearing it and just God, again, working that faith. And I'm thinking, look, if I'm anywhere near a consistent Jew, like I'm actually believe this, the, the Messiah that we've been waiting for all this time, he came. Yeah. We killed him, but praise God, he rose again, and now he brings <laughs> life to Jews and Gentiles. Yeah. Mm. And sins are forgiven. We have eternal life. And so, yeah, when I was, it was just incredible, just reaching. It's like, this is it. He's the guy. Jesus Christ is the man. He's the Messiah. And so um, I remember my dad died very suddenly um, mm. between the summer of my 10th and 11th grade year. And it was now at this point I started thinking, well, all the stuff that I'm learning, I'm receiving this, what, how, what God's showing me in this word, is it serious or not? Because I had some great conversations with my dad toward the end of his life mm. uh, about what I was learning. And that's why I love Lutheran schools is because the students are taking this back home to their parents. Mm, yeah. You know, they're taking it out there and the parents should be coming and engaging in this. And so uh, actually after that, I had a friend take me to a non-denominational mega church where I was a member of. I guess, not like official, They're, a lot of them have different membership ideas, but I attended that church and was very involved uh, sure. from, yeah, about 11th grade all the way till halfway through college. Okay. And so it was really great. And I served in Applied Christianity. So uh, Sarah Crowder was doing the, I think the 9th and 10th Applied Christianity and then Miss Heimlich, so big shout out to her. Actually, best English teacher ever. Um, she actually ran the Applied Christianity, so you lead chapels in the school oh, yeah, for yeah. 11th and 12th grade. Yeah. I know all the language you're talking about at Faith. I've, I've taken time to to go and explore and learn the things that are going on there because it's just remarkable. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway. So so it's kind of interesting. So I was in the non-denominational space. I, I get a lot of it. Um, and so it's funny when people talk about it. I say, yeah, no, I've been there. I, I understand. And I'm very grateful for our, our friends that we have that are our fellow you know, brothers and sisters in Jesus that aren't Lutheran, even though yeah. I'm like, I kind of wish you were, because there's so much more assurance and different things, but we're all at a different spot. And so it's nice that we all get that unity in Christ together. Hmm. So so you went to a, a, a mega church for yes. a while, 
and not a, a, a non-denom mega church, yes. right? So, so then what was your entree into, you were at a, a Lutheran high school, but mm-hmm. what was your entree into the Lutheran church? Yeah. So it kind of goes, bef- so it kind of goes, I was baptized my 11th grade year at the Lutheran high school and it okay. was by a Lutheran pastor hmm. and I'll circle back to him later, Derek Clem. He's a cool guy. Uh, and he's at Mountain View Lutheran Church, I oh, think. Oh, yeah, I know yeah. Derek Clem. So, uh, so what's funny is, so I was baptized there, and I always thought that the Lutherans had it right. I don't know what it was. I didn't think that there was a big difference. And a lot of Lutherans, at least from the circles that I was at, I think a lot of them don't necessarily know what all it entails because you're not express catechized kind of like you are out here in right. fullness, right, of the different teaching and learning. Right. So I would go, I just, I would say Lutherans are right, but I don't know what a Lutheran church really is or what a Lutheran is. Um, but I worked at a summer camp in northern Arizona. It was a non-denominational summer camp. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the best and worst and best times of my life. <laughs> but I came back to that non-denom church, and I was rather appalled by how little we were spending in Scripture, how more moralistic it was. When I got there, when I was in high school, they were going expository, kind of preaching, and you'd go home with homework through Matthew. Mm-hmm. And then by the yeah. time that I came back, and it was 2018 about um, – it was straight moral therapeutic deism, mm. you know, and during the announcements, one of the pastor's kids would get up and floss on stage. So a lot of cringe and it just didn't feel like, <laughs> about not, like dances. not like that <laughs> no, kind no, of no, floss. No, 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 like, you yeah. know, <laughs> I'm not going to get up and do it. No. <laughs> but it was just, and there were some other things too with the youth ministry I was involved in. I had a disagreement um, with the youth pastor and his wife, I guess. Mm. I saw a lot of problems. My sixth grade boys group that I was leading they didn't want to play silly little games. They didn't want to do jump up hype songs. They they actually just wanted to spend time in God's word, which was incredible. Yeah. And so through a very interesting series of circumstances, it uh, it was it was God saying it's time to go. Mm. And in those moments where you get burned, so I can relate, I did get burned there. Um, mm. I'll tell you, the devil is right there saying this is just going to happen to you again. Mm. Don't even bother. Don't even bother. Why are you trying? But I said no. I was just there's just something telling me is you know. I, again, I know how we feel about feelings, but it's just, no, I need to go somewhere where I'm hearing God's word. Yeah. I, need, I need something more than what I've been having these past four years. I'm grateful for my time, but it's time to move on. And so it was the first, I think it was after New Year's, the Sunday right after New Year's in 2019. And I heard that my younger brother, who was a student at the um, high school that I was at, Faith Lutheran, uh, he was attending a church that some of his buddies went to from the school, and it was actually Faith Community Lutheran Church. So that's my home congregation. Very proud mm-hmm. and thankful for my faith family and Pastor Bob and Pastor, Pastor Bob. Craig. I love Pastor Bob. He's my man. Yeah. And uh, Pastor Craig and Rev and so many other people. Awesome. And so it was interesting. I walked in there, and I said, all right, well, I'm going to give it a try. And the first time I went in there, it was Lutheran Church. It was like drinking water for the first time in mm. four or five years. The the service at that point, the contemporary service at that point, had the liturgy still in it. Mm. And it was like, I'm not just observing a Hillsong concert. I'm, I'm participating. I'm yeah. speaking with everyone, God's word back and forth. And then there was this thing, the Lord's Prayer. Okay, I remember I had to memorize the Lord's Prayer in Spanish and, you know, for in chapel. Uh, and as a, now this at this point, I was actually... Uh, in my 11th grade year of college. And yeah. s- interestingly enough, taking a great personalities course at the same time I started going to Lutheran church on Uncle Marty, mm. Martin Luther, yeah. right? So it was like no accident, man, you know? Yeah. Um, but it was interesting is the people were so kind and friendly, but really that feeling of finally having that thirst quench, that great spiritual thirst yeah. Yeah. was when dur- during the sermon, I was actually mm. opening and flipping back and forth through the Bible and seeing just all these things, and mm. the pastor knew what they were talking about. They came and found me. Pastor Bob found me that day, um, and I wound up going to a Romans class, mm. and then they let me get more and more involved, and it was, it felt like home. But to be fair, because I didn't know there was a big difference between Lutherans and others, I went to a Southern Baptist church for two weeks, at, so I went to Lutheran church for two weeks, sure. Southern Baptist church for two weeks. I had a buddy that was interning at a non so I went there, but I always wanted to keep going back to Faith Lutheran. Because I was getting something there I wasn't getting elsewhere. Mm. Bob Sundquist is a, a fantastic teacher and yes. uh, drinks drinks deeply of the scriptures himself, he does. himself so that he can then uh, feed God's people. So, yeah, I got to present with him at a conference, uh, Pacific Southwest District yes. Conference, this fall. 
and um, I was really impressed. He's he's doing really really fantastic work. Yeah, he he really is, and all all the people. It's amazing. I mean, you wouldn't think that Las Vegas of all people would have a lot of churches, let alone Lutheran churches, but there are a ton of churches, and there yeah. I think are seven or eight now LCMS churches in That's the Las fantastic. Vegas Valley. Yeah. And there are there's of course the big school, but there are some other feeder schools too. Mm -hmm. So like Lamb of God, Mountain View, all a lot of great some others, a lot of great stuff. So it kind of came to a point where Pastor Bob started catechizing me over coffee. So I'd go to <laughs> midweek classes, which I love. Please, I just say there's so much joy. Just go. You know, if you're if anybody's on the fence, I just say just go. Like it's amazing. Sure. You yeah. spend time and throughout the usually week. Usually they're yeah. free. I don't know if anybody's charging for confirmation oh, yet, but right. I don't think we do. Right, right. And so and so I would go to the Bible classes, and then I think the next day or so, Pastor Bob, we'd meet at uh, the Pete's Coffee across the street from their new sanctuary at that point. Nice. And uh, they, you know, and he'd say, he'd you know, talk to me about things. Coming from an evangelical background, I could under, I could get, I could be, oh, I'm on board. Yes, Jesus is bodily president, you know, the in in with under bread wine. You know, I, I agree. This is true presence. Scripture teaches it. Church has always taught it for 1,500 years. You know, it's no different today. Uh, I wasn't antagonistic toward infant baptism, mm -hmm. but I just didn't understand why I was drilled in my head that you couldn't get baptized until you were 13. And you that's had to right. wear a shirt when you were baptized that said, I have decided. Why was that the case? But I just thought that's how he always did things. And he explained it, went through the scriptures, seeing how mm -hmm. Paul talks about the exodus, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, going through the water with the entire family. I'm like, okay, that's it. And then looking at the scriptures. So. Yeah. This gift is for you and your children and yes. all who fall out far off. Yeah. Amen. And so he told me one of these days over, and I was asking his question. He said, you ever thought about going to seminary? Hmm. And my first thing out of my mouth was, well, what's a seminary? Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. Then, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure, though. <laughs> a, a few months later, I'm in touch with Concordia Seminary and signed my life away to go here. Woohoo! So that's how I wound up here, and I started in 2020, so the funky Rona year. Yeah. Right, right. Fun, so, fun time. Yeah. So I, I started in March of 2020. Mm -hmm. Sam has been one of our student workers since your second year, at least. Second year, yes. Yeah, and I always knew Sam. It was one of these things where, like, you know people's eyes because yeah. you only interact with them with a mask on. Right. And I remember seeing Sam for the first time, and he, like, I heard the voice. I'm making the connection. He's like, it's Sam Eisenberg. I was like, of course it is. And just I'd just never seen his face before. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, well... So that's what you look like. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just, I, it's one of these things. So I, I frequent Faith Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, I do recruiting trips to high schools. Faith mm -hmm. Las Vegas is one where uh, I think when it comes to recruiting, partnerships, relationships are the things that matter. Yeah. And uh, there aren't a ton of necessarily Lutheran kids at Faith Las Vegas. Yeah. But one thing that I appreciate, I, I go around and I talk to different classes and you have a kid who's either never been to church and mm -hmm. faith might be his only interaction, his or her interaction with the Bible and Christians. Uh, but, but they asked me, I, oh, well, they, they actually asked me about what I do and what being a pastor is and they're mm -hmm. interactive and you can see gears turning. It's like, well, maybe I should go check out a church because this guy seems okay. Whatever anybody else has talked about, um, Christianity can be one thing, but just going into the space where they're comfortable, letting myself be the outsider mm -hmm. and letting them ask. I, every once in a while, I, I tell them they can ask me anything. And I was yeah. like, if it's out, outrageous, I'll, I'll let you know. Every once in a while, a kid will ask me how much money I make. And I'm like, that's, that's such a <laughs> preposterous question. Yeah. It doesn't matter what job you do. That's just. AMA, it, ask me anything. Well, yeah. it, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, but it, it, it's such an incredible space because it is growing. It is large. And and a lot of different dynamics to it. Um, I'll just say this and then I'll move on because it hurts my soul still. There's a, a guy who's a rookie in the NFL named AJ Kincaid. Yeah. He's tied in for the Bills. Mm -hmm. Like leading up to the draft, tight end was a big need for the Cowboys and mm -hmm. he was falling, falling, falling. And then the Bills made a trade and took him right before the Dallas Cowboys had their pick. I thought I thought Don, and I didn't even know he's a student at Faith Las Vegas at some point. Yeah. That's oh, the whole I point. Was, I was wondering where the no, no, story is going. Like I, I, I learned yep. this last fall when I went out to okay. Faith. He I was, was talking Faith to uh, what, um, the CEO um, Buke. Buke. Yep, Doctor Buke. 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 Yes. Yeah. And he was like, "Do you know AJ Kincaid?" I was like, "I don't know him." He's like, "He was a student here." And I was mm -hmm. like, "Oh man, that that would have made it so much crazier yeah. for me if he." became a cowboy because I could have written him like, hey, man, I visit Faith Las Vegas. I'm a Lutheran <laughs> pastor. 
You could Can write you give me some and, tickets? You yeah. could write him and say, <laughs> maybe we need to recruit him, not not to a football team, but, but to become yeah. a passer. He, he's a rookie in the NFL. Yeah, there's, it, there's. I wouldn't say never because NFL careers don't last forever. Drop your nets. Yeah. And <laughs> you wrote a book called Just Drop like, Your Nets and Follow well, Me, didn't you? Yep, there's but a plant, plant seeds, yeah. and then. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's. But, a, Oh, okay. No, I was just going to say, and, and just the things that they do, A, to, to be an incredible school. I, you can graduate from Faith Las Vegas with a pilot's license Yep. to actually fly commercially. Well, but then when I preach in chapel, there's hundreds, and eventually over a couple of – you've preached to a couple thousand students. Yep. And, That's again, amazing. they're engaged. They sing. They appreciate the time, although one one kid asked me how long I usually preach. I was like, well, it sounds like you're telling me my sermon was too long. But <laughs> fair, fair. It was a little long. But, yeah, it's it's just such a remarkable place. And the, the faithful effort to, again, to educate students, but also to make sure that the Word of God is an active part of their lives is just, I just, it's just, I love Lutheran schools as well. That's, it, it's just, it's, it's such a different place. You don't expect it in Las Vegas. Yeah. 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 When so much other stuff is surrounded. Now I'm done. Sorry. That's awesome. And I, then, no, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a, I have a burning question, Sam. So, um, do you know the movie Keeping the Faith? I don't actually. Oh, this is a, this is a movie that you should, okay. that sh- you should see. It's it's about so it has Ben Stiller in it. Oh, right. right. Um, yes. And and he he plays a Jewish rabbi, mm-hmm. and um, Edward Norton. Edward Norton Catholic is priest. the um, <laughs> is the the Catholic priest, and they they become best of friends. But as you were talking about bar, bar mitzvah yeah. uh, and how hard it was, there is a scene with Ben Stiller and this this young teenage boy who's trying to chant <laughs> and it's it's um it, it's even worse than uh chanting sometimes is in our chapel <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. Uh, I, I didn't mention any names and it might have been me because i don't try to chant in chapel usually because my wife tells me that's not my spirit, <laughs> spiritual gift uh which she is right um, but you have to you have to see that movie at some point. Keeping the faith, I think you would especially appreciate it. But I actually think that keeping the faith is, could be kind of an interesting movie for us to uh, recommend to people that are considering ministry because it's, mm-hmm. it's it's a light hearted movie, and yet it it takes it takes the vocation of pastor very seriously. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I don't remember all the parts though, so maybe I should, maybe I should temper my my. Uh, well, <laughs> well, you mentioned the movie. I was my like, recommendation, keeping the faith, keeping the faith. and as soon as you said Ben Stiller, I was yeah. like, oh, that's the movie because there's also like a love interest in there. Yeah, yeah. shared yeah. love interest, right? A, a shared yeah. love interest, which is very interesting <laughs> because it's a Jewish rabbi who can get married and a Roman Catholic priest who yeah. cannot, and yeah. so yeah, wow. it's a, it's an interesting it's an interesting movie, but yeah, I. I don't remember. It's been a long time since mm-hmm. I've seen it. So, viewers, beware. Uh, watch it before you show it to your children. Yeah, or yeah. Like that. <laughs> for um, sure. It's, but it's it's not. If a it's bad inappropriate, movie, then yeah. that's I, what I meant. Not then. for kids per se, but yep. y- y- you said chanting as a spiritual gift. Sorry, I would call that first article. Now we'll move on. It just, it, of it, of it, course, yeah, yeah. it was a joke. But I can't. I can't. Theologian, just, you. Listen, man. I I got to take those things seriously because if I don't. Oh oh yeah. Micah is the spiritual gifts expert, uh, um, well, or becoming maybe, the spiritual gifts expert. Maybe one expert. day. Oh, yeah. Maybe one so, day. So, so yes, no. I don't really think that chanting is a spiritual gift. But some people might. And if that's, you're listening and you think possible. chanting is a spiritual gift, it is not. It is not. Chanting uh, is very awesome, though. Highly recommend you try it. Yeah, I think I think chanting. Try fine. it once. Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and if you're really good at it, keep doing it. And yeah. if not, uh, recommend. To get a cantor at your church, agreed. Yeah. Or just, or, or just speak the liturgy. That works too. You, you, you chant, you chant very well. well thank you, uh, Sam. Um, so, uh, a thank you for sharing so much about your story. Absolutely. Because again, I've I've asked you about it so many times, and I feel like every time you tell it, there's it's like reading a good book over. There's there's just pieces of it that I think are are just so remarkable. Just because again, it. Once you get into, if you're if you're a lifelong Lutheran or late into Lutheranism, and you look into a pulpit and you just imagine whatever guys that whatever story that guy's story is, 
it can't be mine. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 like, because there's no way that God will take somebody who's had just such a, a remarkable childhood and everything else and bring them into the ministry. And yet that's exactly your story. Um, and again, you're not a pastor yet. I feel very confident that come April, you'll be certified for ministry. You'll receive mm -hmm. a call. Uh, you'll accept a call. That's yeah. not like me telling you you'll no. accept a call, but you're a faithful guy. So you'll accept your oh, yeah. call. Yeah. yeah. The seminary <laughs> uh, says that. And you're just going to be a remarkable pastor. And then God will use your story to help transform the lives of other people who think that they don't fit. And you'll be able to, to bring those pieces together for them. And I just, it's just so incredible. And so you shared that story. You became a student at CSL mm -hmm. during, what did you call it? Fuck the COVID the, year? The Funky Rona funky year. The Rona. Funky Rona. There we go. Rona. And so, um, well, yeah, if, if you don't mind just, just telling us a little bit about your student experience, because you've also right. just come back from Vicarage. Yes. And so, yeah, we have, I don't know that we've talked a whole lot about Vicarage Not on done. this podcast. And so um, I'd even be just yeah, skip the funky in, Rona years because that's uh, not as interesting. Class on Zoom yeah. is boring. Tell us. Yes. So, <laughs> for somebody that doesn't know what a vicar or vicarage is, tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Tell us where yours was in particular. Absolutely. So, what was kind of interesting is I didn't know what a vicar or vicarage was either until uh, I got here. And I said, oh, yeah, you'll go on your vicarage, you'll be a vicar. Excuse me, what? What's that? <laughs> Sounds know? like something that the that they do in the Anglican church or something, right? Yeah. The vicar. Yeah, my doctor, I have a doctor, and uh, he studied abroad in uh, England. And he said, he said, oh, you're on your vicarage. And so I said, you know, are you, so you are a vicar? I said, well, I'm, you know, I, yeah, actually, yes. He said, oh, yeah, I stayed, with a, I stayed in a vicarage uh, in England because he <laughs> stayed with the actual vicar right, at an Anglican right. church. He said it was an awesome year. Sure. And a vicar. Ridge in yeah. England is the home, the yeah. home of the vicar, right? Yes. right? Yeah. yeah. And so I think when, I guess actually you, you made a light bulb kind of thing, uh, go up there. Uh, what I, vicarage is the best year. Uh, mm. the first two years are a grind. You're not sitting around kumbaya with your Bible as a lot of us went in thinking was going to happen, but I'm very grateful that it wasn't that way because it strips you down and forms you, you know, forms you. And then you go on vicarage and that place does become your home for a year. Those yep. the people became become your home, mm, and that's, I, that's, that's exactly good. what my experience was. I I was very blessed. I had my vicarage down at uh, Trinity Lutheran Church in Springfield, Missouri. I mm. love our Trinity family. Had a great pastor, and I was his first vicar, mm. so uh, I hope I treated him well. He treated me well, uh, and uh, wonderful staff, great saints down there that I got to learn from and live life with yep. on vicarage. Uh, I got to preach every other Sunday. I was wow. completely responsible for both the worship planning and developing my own sermon series for Lent and Advent services. Mm, yeah. You're doing stuff. Of course, you do some few things like language labs, continuing for the seminary during that year and other things, but uh, just enjoying and leaning into that time of fellowship. Um, you plan a service project, and I actually was able to combine mine with the Missouri District Shine Servant event, mm, and we had nice. over yeah. 60 volunteers of all ages from Trinity. Our Trinity family just come out and be a part of that, and we cleaned up the yards and got to form relationships with over 14, you know, households uh, right next to the church, and we plastered awesome. 247 of them asking uh, if they wanted anything. So it just, you do a lot in your vicarage. Uh, it's a different kind of grind, but I love it. Um, and I, it was, it was really the best year and I made some connections. In fact, I know that there's one particular listener to this that was asking me today, you know, Hey, when are you going to be on this? So, oh, yeah. and he, yeah, Nihal, great guy. He wants to oh, go to the seminary too. Yeah, yeah you right. know him. Shout He's out. The Nihal man. comes of Ocasio. It, I love Nihal. He is an incredible young man. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And when his uh, sister came to Ocasio yes. for the first time, uh, Sally. Yeah. yeah. And well, uh, a couple of people from Trinity come to, uh, to Vocatio and I, I really appreciate them and yeah, I appreciate that you, you, they got to be, uh, well, you, you got to be the congregation's first vicar yeah. because it's just, it, it is, I was my congregate, my vicarage congregation. I was their first vicar. Yeah. When you're the first of something, it's like, well, I hope, I hope you guys want another vicar after. Did they get yeah. another vicar they, after they, you? They did. Uh, well. And now they have a, a new pastor classmate named Derek Waffle. Wow. But again, it's like one of those things, like a couple things that, that stood out um, is that 
again, the incredible nature of vicarage. Yeah. I'm glad you got to preach every other week. I got to. When you first get on your vicarage and you're, you're preaching every other week, it's yeah. you don't do that for, for hom it's classes. You don't do that at your seminary. And you're just like coming up with a, a new sermon every two weeks. Yeah. And then, but, but it's such an important part of your vicarage because you'd rather do it there where people understand where you are yeah. in your formation and they're going to be a little more gracious right. Absolutely. than when you're their pastor and yeah. they're like, all right, pastor, like it's been yeah. a couple months now. It's, step it up. Step it up. <laughs> yeah. And you're doing like everything too. So, I mean, I just mentioned that I'm teaching Bible class and confirmation. Yeah. We're doing funerals for, you know, funerals and you're doing your shut-in visits. Uh, my supervisor was great. He gave me so many opportunities to, actually go and do this stuff and yeah. learn and you're sitting in all these different meetings so if i guess the big comfort of vicarage is particularly if you got great supervisors which i imagine pretty much everyone is you know at least they know what they're doing and are willing to show and help the next guys in line yeah. is it will kind of iron things out if you're like i don't know how to do this and i'm a guy i like to kind of be told okay what's expected of me that's what's nice about the vicarage years yeah. you make it through those two years and then you actually get to see how it is and you say I'm going to take this and I'm going to do that when I get the call. When, when I was a vicar, I, um, our, our associate pastor was taking a call like the same weekend that I started. And yeah. so I, for, for almost in every way served as an associate pastor, which is not the way vicarage is <laughs> intended. Um, and I, I regularly tell vicarage supervisors, I thank them because, uh, the, the best way that a vicarage runs is where the church actually doesn't need the vicar mm -hmm. um, and that it, it is just an opportunity for the vicar to grow and learn. So, of course, you're a blessing to the church because mm -hmm. you're bringing the Word of God and you're, you're a full-time uh, uh, assistant of, of sorts, pastoral mm -hmm. assistant of mm -hmm. sorts. Um, but the best vicarage is the one that sees the vicar as truly a student, yes. not as just, hey, we have a new person on our staff for a year. Um, yeah. So uh, some sometimes you just have to learn by yeah. doing, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, the best vicarages yeah. are the ones that, that recognize this, yeah. that you're a student and mm -hmm. that you don't have it all figured out yet, and so you do get a little yeah. more grace, hopefully. And as a student, you just really get a lot of that freedom to go and enjoy. In fact, one of the highlights of mine, and I have to mention them, is my pickleball group. Uh, there were a bunch of uh, great guys and gals that they know exactly who they are, and they invited me about the first week or so to go to pickleball, and they play pickleball every single Tuesday, and then we go out and get some beer and, you know, chicken tenders at uh, one of the greatest restaurants there in, down in Springfield, Skybox. Uh, all, like every single Tuesday. And it was incredible how, particularly after those long and those really hard, intense times, just spending time with your people just did wonders and reminds you, you know, who you're doing this for. Yeah. And you get to answer and talk and just be a person. And that's one thing that I'm very thankful for. And remember on Vicarage is, yeah, you're just the vicar, you know, and you're also a person. Yeah. And you get to fulfill all your different vocations, including being a fellow brother in Christ and enjoy fellowship in these great gifts. So on Vicarage, I highly recommend, yeah, do your stuff, but spend some time with people, yeah, get to get know to them, know. make some yeah. new friends and connections, you know, and I don't know. I There's a time to be really serious, but there's also a time you just got to be a person, you know? Yeah. That was one thing that we made, a, was, well, well, Dorothy was a PK, and so there were certain things where she would be like, my dad did this and it served him well in his congregations, which, which was helpful. Yeah. Which were, okay. Sorry, it sounded like something cut out there. Yeah, it did. Well, yeah. anyway. But I think we're good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but never lost an opportunity where somebody in the, the congregation was having a, a get together, yeah. even like getting invited because um, you're away from your family to mm -hmm. people's Thanksgivings and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and just going and meeting their family and, because then, like, their distant family will be like, oh, like, my mom has been talking about this yep. new vicar. It's, it's great to meet you. And then they come to the, uh, a service on Sunday. Yep. But then at the last youth gathering, there were youth that were, well, they were, they were younger than they were when mm -hmm. they were at the youth gathering, when I was their vicar. <laughs> <laughs> but then seeing them at the youth gathering and seeing them kind of growing up, it's yeah. like, man. But then they remember you. And, like, it is just a year. Yeah. And so yeah. that's. That's one thing. You're still a student. You are just a vicar. Mm -hmm. You're there for a year. 
But you're right. You get this opportunity to meet brothers and sisters in Christ, right. to serve them at a capacity, but then also just to be their brother or sister yeah. in Christ. I, and for me, it was in northern Alabama. It just gives you, I, I always tell people, you got to get out of uh, your bubbles you do. that you're comfortable in, that mm-hmm. you're yep. used to. And you, you got to get out and you got to see the world the way other people see it. Yeah. And not just not just for the sense of walking in somebody else's shoes, but even for your own personal growth and development, uh, because the place that you love and you've grown up and you're comfortable in, you might go discover a place that you're, fits you better, yes. that you want to be a part of better. And it, it's just remarkable. And again, even for Vicarage, where I, I agree with a lot of what you said, but then I'm also kind of like, it is a year. And I, I think it, it, it's good to some extent for, for certain students, maybe I was one of them, to be challenged a little bit and to be put in a context that's going to challenge you. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it can still be challenging. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah I, yeah, I had definitely, I'm sure as you guys had on yours, I definitely had some very high highs and some very low lows, and they yep. came at the worst <laughs> time. Like I had a pipe burst on Christmas oh, morning sure. oh. at 2.30. And nice. I was out of my apartment for over a month and a half. Wow. And But praise God, the saints at Trinity and others just came together. You know, a great family that my wife and I are very close to. They're at our wedding, actually. Oh, uh, the awesome. winters, they had their kids in town. He said, no, no, you come. You come spend with us. Because I'm like, I'm not driving up to St. Louis when I don't know what's going up with my, you know, apartment and, you know, the pastors and other people. And it's just allow, allow others to go out of their way for you. Yeah. And they will. And then you had some really high highs, like for just different retreats and just certain sermons or occasions and people's feedback to what you're doing and your ability to teach. So it's okay if there's a ups and downs. Yeah. Just ride with it. Be faithful. And I'm, I'm glad that you, you talked about getting to know all these people. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I, I pretty regularly get questions from students about, uh, can I be friends with people in the parish? And, um, I mean, at first, at first uh, glance, it's like, well, of course. Why wouldn't mm-hmm. you? Yeah. There, there are some places where you have to be careful, and you yes. have to, you have to be thoughtful. Um, with your friends, you might talk about um, the joys and the challenges yeah. of work, and sometimes uh, pastoral ministry is uh, difficult. Yeah. And so, uh, but, but I, I do think uh, that it's. Very, not just possible, I think it's important yeah. for a pastor to find some people mm-hmm. that uh, he can really uh, be himself with. Yeah. And and even they're, they're, they 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 need to be mature Christians. Correct. Uh, but but they you're not you're not going to divulge people's secrets mm-hmm. from the from the confessional. But you might talk about a a particularly stressful meeting or something. And you need to have a few safe people in the congregation where you can just say, this meeting was really tough. And they're not saying like, ooh, who, was, who made it tough or whatever. <laughs> right. they're, they're just caring for you. We have, we have two couples that um, we got to know over our vicarage, and they've become lifelong mm-hmm. friends. Uh, we still get together with them. Uh, every once in a while, and we're we're always texting or calling. We're we're godparents to one of their their daughters, um, so I'm I, I'm really glad yeah. to hear you talk about getting to know people on yeah. on Vicarage. You will learn you will learn where you keep what things that you keep to yourself, and what yeah. things you can just be honest. Because there are sometimes they say, guys, it's been a rough week in the office. I'm just glad we get to smack some pickleballs around, grab some beer after, and talk about Jesus. You know. Uh, and there are other times, again, one thing that I actually learned on my vicarage from my pastor is the importance of having that circle of trust. Yeah. And he'd say when there's something real important, all right, guys, circle of trust. Mm. And it's so true. And it's been such a blessing. So you'll learn those things, but don't be paralyzed. You'll learn. And uh, Did you ask your pastor yeah. where he got that phrase, circle of trust, from? I did not. You Isn't should ask. Me you should ask where. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's from exactly a movie, right? That's, from, the, that's what I thought It's of. from another Ben Stiller movie. <laughs> oh, yeah? I'm, I'm full of Ben Stiller movies today. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, have to, yeah. I'll have to ask him. <laughs> um, I can't say the title oh, meet of the, that. Meet the parents. Yeah, Actually, oh, the first oh, one is to meet the parents. Yeah, yeah, there we go. I, I was yeah, thinking of the second one. I was yeah, like, no, yeah, I don't want to say the title. Exactly. Yeah, meet the parents is where it comes from. Again, watch it before you watch it. Oh, my gosh. So, quick story for for anybody who has seen Meet the Parents, um, it's it's about a couple that's getting uh, engaged, 
and you've, you've just recently gotten married, so That's we'll right. have to ask about that. But right. um, my then girlfriend, uh, who is now my beloved wife, and we've had 20 years together, wow. but um, she delighted in this. <laughs> she showed me Meet the Parents like a week before I was going to propose. And what? it actually freaked me out to the point that I, I delayed. I was so nervous. Yeah, um, yeah Meet the Parents. It's a, it's a movie that you got to see. Uh, pr- proposing is oh. a big deal. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So now we're just a, a room full of married men at the moment. That's Sam, right. you were, you're, brand, I mean, you're, brand you're, new you're a newlywed. Fresh yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're still yeah. You're fresh to the game. You're not so even where'd you meet your, where'd yeah. you meet your, your now wife? Okay. So uh, the thing is, when you come to seminary, you're assigned a field work church. And yeah. I came here single as a Pringle, uh, as they would say. <laughs> I don't know. There's this really kind of annoying advertisement for like a Christian dating app or whatever it is. And they'd say, are you single as a Pringle and ready to mingle? You know? <laughs> and so I don't know why that stuck with my vocabulary, but that's beside the point. You tried it and you, you remain yeah. single as a Pringle. I, and so then you went to your field work congregation. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know, I was just like, nah, man, I don't care how cheesy it is. I'll just see what happens. You know, I was about to make my vows a chassis or something. I was right. like, <laughs> like, well, first year, nothing like whatever God's going to will. And, and he'll, and, and he'll, he will bring that, when he when he does and i'm so glad to not meet her my first year mm. you grow and change so much and yeah. some people you see more than others i think i was a lot more than others in that case so long story short no actually i'll go with it um <laughs> so i was about to preach my first sermon so it was just finished summer hebrew i passed thank you jesus um you know and uh we had a retired vacancy pastor and his wife that were attending my fieldwork congregation in Illinois. So shout out to St. Paul Luther Church in Wood River, Illinois, Pastor Schultz. Mm. He's the man. Uh, and so what's interesting is, um, so the vacancy pastor's wife asked me after the service says, Sam, can I talk to you? And I say, sure. Cause you know, you're greeting people on the way out. You know, I'm getting ready for a sermon next week, but I'm just doing liturgy day. She says in private. So she drags me by the arm and pulls me over to the side and asks, do you have a woman in your life? And I say, no, well, no, but uh, I pray for her every single day. And she says, oh, I have just the woman for you. She loves Jesus like you do. She's a nurse. She plays three different instruments. She sings. She crafts. Do you want to meet her? So my heart's going. <laughs> I say, yeah, that'd be great. So week goes by. I preach my first sermon. There's no mystery girl right there uh, with this, you know, this pastor couple. And so um, the pastor, so Pastor Scott Weiler, he's great awesome man he's down at uh he's down in valley park doing some great stuff and so uh he said so he said seminary sam later that day texted me said we you know we're gonna go hang out uh we heard that you know about our friend megan and uh do you want to go do you want to meet her or hang out with us with some of your some of the guys of seminary said oh megan's fine no pressure (laughs) no pressure uh so uh we met and i was actually working orientation for the seminary that week and uh Lo and behold, it's the rest is history. Their connection is because um, he was my wife's Megan, my wife Megan's vacancy pastor for a little bit uh, mm, yeah. up up in North St. Louis. When I was in okay. Ferguson, yeah, Salem. Yep. Yeah, I know Scott. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a great, great guy. guy isn't he? Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of funny. We're very different. I mean, she's born and bred, lifelong LCMS Lutheran, same church, same everything. You know, seventh of eight kids. Yeah. You know, great faithful family. Her brother yeah. Justin Knobloch. Plays the yep. organ for us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so Salem and Blackjack is like just a little bit away from Chapel Across where I grew up. And so I remember, because I, I feel like as post vicarage, well, when you came back, you were getting ready to get married. And I, I was just asking, you were like Megan Knobloch. And I was like, that sounds, I didn't know them very well because again, well, anyway, yeah. you know how close, close. You can't Lutheran say churches anything. are. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah. I, Justin was at Concordia Chicago when I was a student there. Yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah, it's just awesome. And I, I, I she came looking for you a, a few weeks ago. And she's like, do you know where Sam would be? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. I yeah, don't. That's right. But I'll, I'll let you in where the classes are and feel free to roam around and go find your husband. Yeah. Were you guys married at the time? Yeah, I think okay, so. Okay, maybe again. So. Yeah, yeah. So, so how long have you been married? So since October seventh. So, well, now it's last month, which is crazy right. to think about. A it's whole. Been great. <laughs> You'll stop counting the months eventually, <laughs> yeah. but in, yeah. but for now, a hundred percent enjoy, enjoy every days. single day, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's great. That's great. Good stuff. Yeah, it's good old Lutheran single 
gotta gotta introduce you to somebody dorothy yeah. does that right. my wife does that and Ooh, I'm, she's a matchmaker well we, i, we play I match. don't know if she's ever actually made a match she's, <laughs> she's gonna be mad at me but she tries we play matchmakers with pastors and congregations but we don't usually play matchmaker with nah. with uh, mm -hmm. guys and gals it's too risky yeah it's too yeah. risky yeah, i told i told uh scott linnell i said you're one for one you know because <laughs> after go, 50 man. years That's of marriage awesome. they never did that yeah. so she's like i felt a loving tug from the lord well, look <laughs> at that. God bless you you know <laughs> glad you did <laughs> Well, we should probably um, do some ripe for the picking. Ooh. Sure. Oh, yeah. I just looked over. Ben looks at the clock. I sit this way intentionally because I don't care how long we record. I oh, think I we can. could probably do this for three hours and people would Oh, we could do this for three, three hours. Uh, I just don't know. Nobody wants to listen to us for listening. three hours. <laughs> I, am, I, I, I couldn't do this for three hours. I, 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 anyway, all right. So, Sam, we're getting to the best, most important, most valuable part segment of Under the Fig Tree. And Absolutely. be careful how you answer because I said I think you'll be certified and okay. this might be the thing that gets in the way. Uh, it's right for the picking or leave it on the tree. Okay. Um, we will ask you very controversial and highly subjective, uh, often one word topics. Yeah. If you like it, uh, it's right for the picking. You know, in the ideal world, there'd be something that you actually picked off of something. If you're crafty and you're a listener and you want to make something like that, where like this segment's your favorite segment and you want somebody to pull a fig off of a fig tree. You haven't, you haven't, you you haven't do it. thrown that out for a good long while. I feel like, <laughs> uh, listen, I, I am not ashamed to ask for just about anything in the world. <laughs> if you're a listener and you've heard this idea and you would make it for us, you'll be immortalized on this yeah, podcast. That's right. Um, and well, anyway, and we'll put you, we'll put you, we'll put your name on it if you make it for us. Anyway, and so like if you like it, it's right for the pick. And if you don't like it, just you leave it on the tree. Okay. And then we'd have to do our work, and we'd have to put them. We'd have to like tag That's the. Right. And <laughs> man, see, listen, my creativity is flowing right now. <laughs> this doesn't happen often. All right, Sam, I'll go first. Right. right for the picking, leave it on the tree. The random aisle of stuff at Aldi. Okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do know what you're talking okay. about. Okay. It's fun to look at, but I know I should leave it on the tree. Okay. Mm. I should leave it on the tree. I got a fruit of spirit, self control, you know? Mm. All right. Th th that is a spiritual gift. Man, it's, it's a <laughs> 100% ripe for the picking for me. I've found Christmas presents there. I've found, um, I found socks there. I've, I've just, I've found all kinds of great stuff. We have these nice silicone, uh, circular um cake pans and like, they are they are like magic they probably are like four bucks fantastic yeah, yeah yeah exactly and they're we threw out all of our old ones that were like rusty and i would always be thinking like man i'm gonna get tetanus from eating <laughs> this cake all it takes is one little scratch on the right. pan and all of a sudden it's rusty it's, so yeah. i i appreciate what you said so like it is 100% right for the picking for me. I, yeah. I like random stuff in the world. Yeah. I, you do have to exercise self-control, at least. That's what I tell Dorothy when she goes to Aldi. Because she'll like... Do you have to exercise self-control at Aldi's? I mean... In today's economy? Yes. <laughs> Newly <laughs> wet budget? But isn't, yes. every, <laughs> isn't everything there like less than $10? It used to be. Bro, when's the last time you physically, you personally went to Aldi? Yeah, <laughs> there we go. This is a man of Bitcoin who's who's yeah. disassociated <laughs> with the modern no, no, economy no. and we, price of things. We we shop at Aldi's all the time, but it's like Instacart. It's Instacart. I, I'm, I'm, I, we <laughs> you need got to. me. Hundred percent. We need to. It's I'm been not like two it. years yeah. since I've been to Aldi's, probably. But like, uh, but but Dorothy would buy the whole aisle, that, and that's what I'm saying. So like, one item being four dollars, not a big deal. A hundred items being four dollars, now we got a problem. But, but, but it, you, I, I'll look through it. I don't know if I always pick something. Yeah. Do you do finances for your family? No, nah, Dorothy does. Okay. I can't, like, okay, we did, like, the whole Dave Ramsey thing. Yep. Getting me, you, and you'll know this about me. Getting me to sit down and do something <laughs> I don't want to do for an hour, I think Dorothy has moved past that part of our life. I, she still tries some things. And if it's, if it's urgent, Dorothy will force me. It's funny. Dorothy does the budget. I do the taxes. Oh yeah, that's that's the way we do it in our family. Yeah, I don't, I don't really care how money, like insofar as like I think 
Dorothy's by far the more frugal one, so if she's gonna do the budget, it's yeah. gonna work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then if I'm gonna buy a pair of sneakers, I say, hey, these are coming out in two weeks on Sneakers app. What do you think? <laughs> yes or no? And I can always gauge like how she, she, she'll, she'll never say like, no. Or maybe there is a no, and she just hasn't gone there yet, and we're not there. But like, I can tell that like if she doesn't want me to do it based upon her response, and if she doesn't want me to do it, I'm like, okay. She said she won't divorce me, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, anyway, I try to honor the budget maker. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. It's a good, good <laughs> idea. All right, I um, I may have just seen this one, but I'm okay. I'm just um, I'm fascinated and kind of shocked, um, but maybe not. Um, so right for the picking or leave it on the tree, military time on your phone. Oh, absolutely. You know, right for the picking. I got it on my phone. Yeah. You use military time on your phone? I do. You, you, you set yourself up. What? He was looking at my phone. <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah, and he thought, oh, he <laughs> I thought was he was like, going to get it. You're kidding 100%. me. It's 1357. It is 1357. What the? It's an easy way of telling what time it is, man. Exactly. What in the world? When, when, if military I say, time on your phone? If I say 1400, you don't have to say AM or PM. Precisely. You got to yep. be kidding me. Precision, Ben. Yes, it is. Exactly. Oh. And you, you, you sound you like You should cool. live in London. Yeah, listen, Goodness. I, listen, it, it just the, the they clock. Use, they use goes military around. time in London, right? In, uh, in most other countries, I think. Yeah, Germany yeah, Germany's yeah. all about <clears throat> military time. I mean, they, they don't call it military time, they yeah. just call it time. At risk of. Of another cat incident. If we got rid of the imperial measuring system, I wouldn't be upset. Yeah. Uh, the the metric system any. is yeah, hundred percent. It doesn't make any by sense far though. superior than inches and yards. And this is whatever. not anything yeah. close to the cat. There's nothing. <laughs> nothing will ever come close to me saying cats are yeah. awful creatures. And, and I, I agree. I, what? I, <laughs> well, I, he didn't say that. We're gonna edit that out yeah. in post production because. I have already made my apologies, and our listeners know that I, I, I repent. So not only do you not <laughs> like cats, you don't like military time. Military time on your phone? It's good, Come man. on, man. Everything. What? Even, <sighs> even my watch. Even yeah. my watch. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. What you got for us? All right. Right for the picking. Leave it on the tree. Bungee jumping. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to leave that, but I've been skydiving, and oh. I... I don't know. I feel safe I think those, skydiving. Yeah, I, was, I think those two things are, some people would say no, but I think they're actually radically different. But. Yes, they are. Well, sure. <laughs> one, you're like, just like plunging to your death, and the other one, you actually have a cord that might keep you from plunging to your death. I, don't, I still don't know which one you're talking about. Which, which, <laughs> which one? Skydiving, there's, there's nothing that, there's, there's, there's no safety. If your parachute doesn't work, oh. eventually you just, your, your fall stops because you hit the this, ground. This is true. No, thanks. <laughs> totally, totally leave it on the tree for me. Absolutely yeah. will will never, um, yeah. not not for all the money in the world, not for uh, any dare, I would divulge any secret before I was forced to skydive or bungee jump. Interesting. I think there used to be a time when, and I, I don't know how it ended up there because I didn't even consider it until I wrote it down the mm-hmm. list. There used to be a time when I would have done it, okay. but now uh, I don't. I don't think I would. I've done like if you go to like theme parks and like they have those giant swings. Yeah. At, at St. Louis Six Flags, it's called the Dragon Swing. I've done that before, and I still don't. I don't quite equate it to bungee jumping. But yeah, no, it's not the same. I don't think. But I would. I would. I would still skydive. Oh yeah, I'd do it again. But I, I never in a million years. I, I like I would I would skydive over bungee jumping any day. I think okay. I, it's a, do, I, I like, don't want any part of any of that. When it also like when there's a zip line through like the jungle. Yeah, yeah I, I do zip line. Except, yeah. okay, I'm not anymore. But I used to weigh a lot more than I do now. But and I'm still but I'm still 220 pounds. Yeah. And they'll be like, this is rated for somebody 300 pounds. But like I'm dense, bro. Like. <laughs> Is it actually going to stop me? I'm, I'm like dead, on the higher end of like the weight safety yeah. for those things. And that's why I don't wouldn't bungee jump. You could say it's rated for something, but yeah. Mm, anyway. So we're going to go from we're going to go from <laughs> bungee jumping um, to sleeping in recliners. Right for the picking, leave it on the tree. Sleeping in a recliner. Sleeping in a recliner. No, I'm a couch guy. If I oh. if I'm gonna sleep in anything seated, it's either gonna be a couch and preferably I don't know if you guys have ever been like RVing or anything like that. Yep. 
the best sleep you will ever get is when you hear the hum of the engine and that RV is like a class A coach or, you know, the boss looking ones and you're on a couch, you're stretched out and it's just bumping just over oh. the road. So that's mm. why a recliner, in my opinion, even if it's in a vehicle like that, can never replicate it. And that's why I'm going to leave that recliner right where it belongs on the tree. Wow. Okay. Oh, it's right for the pick for it's, me. I got yeah, one me like you can ba- you can stretch right on out. Oh yeah, we were. I may have already taken a nap in my recliner today. <laughs> it's nothing wrong. I, we when we some bought, people eat lunch during their lunch hour. I take uh, a nap uh, like eighty percent of the time. Yeah. Uh, when we bought the furniture set that we currently have, uh, we weren't going to get this recliner, but like the the salesman sold Dorothy on it more than he sold me, and Dorothy was like, "Well, you might as well just get it and see." It. He was not wrong. It like you don't get flat. Mm-hmm. But like you get like the yeah. perfect, especially like after yeah. preaching on Sunday, right? Try to oh. watch the first game okay. if it's not the Cowboys. Recline, okay. and oh. I'm out for yeah. like a good solid 35 yeah. minutes. Can't be bothered. After yeah. church naps are amazing, right? Yeah. All right. Well, here's a lot. Not now. You got me thinking about my recliner, man. <laughs> I, it's harder to nap because my kids spend a lot of time in the living room and they're busy. Yeah. Get your some head, some earplugs. I have I have three pairs of noise canceling headphones. <laughs> um, <laughs> My kids penetrate. <laughs> they, <laughs> they know. All right, last one for me. Right for the picking, leave it on the tree. Uncrustables. You mean like the... the, the there's, there's only one yes. uncrustable. You know it exactly is. what I'm talking exactly about. I know exactly I will yeah. take it. I will take it right, right. for the picking. It, is it... Is un- it's a PB&J sandwich. Yes, sir. It, nothing else. Yes, sir. Oh, but, but PB&J with no, sandwich? With no crust. In with, the okay. purest of its form. It is. Isn't there a, a kind of like a jar that that is peanut butter and jelly yeah and it's yeah. maybe this is called not, uncrustables or something. i mean there might no. be an uncrustable brand of that okay. but this is yeah. this is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich they cut off the crust they've they've crimped the ends and it's a pb and j certified and you classic. said what oh i'll take it yeah absolutely right for the picking this is where Good i memories. get this is where i get judgmental so, <laughs> i i could i could not fathom that my children would <laughs> would convince their mother to cut the crust off of their sandwiches. It was like, oh. it, it, it was, it drove me <clears throat> bonkers. I, I was, um, eating was a big deal at my house and you just ate it and you just liked it. Clean plate club. If you want to have grandma's cookies, you got to finish everything. Um, what about the crust, grandma? Of course you got to eat the crust. That's where all the vitamins are, all that kind of stupid stuff. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I eat the crust on everything. I eat everything on my plate, uh, but my children don't. So oh. I lost that that parenting battle. So, no, I'm not cutting the crust off of anybody. Well, sandwich. you don't cut it yeah. off. It comes that way, packaged. A packaged <laughs> peanut butter and jelly yes, sandwich? Yes, You've never heard or seen this before? I'm going to bring you one. I have some at my house. Yeah. They sound absolutely disgusting and awful. Are they uh-uh. soggy? Is the bread soggy? No, nah, because they freeze it. What? Yeah, and you just a pop frozen it, peanut and you, butter? Huh? You pop it in the toaster at risk of it oozing out yes. and ruining a toaster, but you do it anyway. Worth it. Yeah. Dude. Uh, so I, 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 I think my tone is letting everybody else not. know how I feel about it. Absolutely not. Because A, like they're You still owe me you still owe me pork, pork rinds. rinds. Yeah. And now and I, now you're gonna bring me yeah. some disgusting Ooh. Uh, we need to have like a, a mukbang of all the random <laughs> foods that Ben says he doesn't like. So like if anything, it's it's a convenience thing. Cause this isn't questionable. I was cutting the crust the greatest off of a sandwich convenient i didn't do it it came packed yeah. i'm not saying convenient for the people who put it together who put the peanut butter jelly cut off the crust crimped it put it in a single package put it in a box put it in a freezer and shipped it somewhere i'm talking about for me i can reach into my freezer grab out an uncrustable and even if you don't want it toasted by the time uh it unthaws for lunch there's probably enough preservatives in there that the bread is still nice. Yeah. And, and those preservatives are only turning it's you sick. into a superhuman over time anyway. Is so the it's a win. white yeah. bread? It is white bread. It is white bread. Oh, white bread. Yeah. Come on, guys. So I, I mean, so <laughs> this is just going from bad to worse. <laughs> it's probably filled with all kinds of sunflower oil and nastiness. Once again, when you I put w- that w- stuff in your body, when it's I can like fly some years from now, you're going to be jealous. Yeah. So I'm, I'm getting ready to go like Joe <laughs> Rogan level crazy. We, <laughs> we, we don't cut crust off of bread in our house. Come I mean, on. The crust of bread tastes nice. It's just, it's just yeah. the way it comes. And 
what I was gonna say, the great thing about it, it's it's not for discussion. The greatest sandwich ever made is peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. Oh. Unparalleled. I'm, yeah. I prefer strawberry jam yeah. over on like some, grape jelly. On some or nice like that. Uh, homemade bread, natural peanut butter with absolutely no oil in it, <laughs> with just maybe a little bit of sea salt and some some really nice jelly. Yeah. I'm 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 down for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I'm not hating on yeah. peanut I, butter and jelly. I don't have to have the natural peanut butter. I don't have to. I, I but, have to have the but natural like, peanut butter. But like I but what I don't care for is Jif. No, that's not what I was gonna say. <laughs> I don't care for peanut butters that don't add sugar to the peanut butter. It doesn't have to be There's sweet. There's not supposed to be sugar in peanut butter. Just stop it. Just that's, the, that's, the reason, anyway. that's the reason you're putting jelly on. I'll tell you. <laughs> like, if you want to try it, you want to try something new. Uh, my wife and I had this for our dinner yesterday. You know matzah bread? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you can actually make a matzah bread P- PB&J. Mm-hmm. If you haven't tried it, try it. All right. Is it matzo really bread crunchy? Absolutely, yeah. Just like try that it. That little texture, yeah. It might, Just try it. It might be bang. Yeah. Huh. Do you it layer slaps. it or is it? You can do whatever you want with it. Okay. You, like, right. I mean, I, no, the thing is. It sounds is, like peanut butter and jelly on saltine crackers. Yeah, it's better than I, saltine I, I crackers. Say, that's a little disrespectful to like, matzo bread, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't talk about matzo <laughs> bread. Like, that's bad. That's my word. All right. So, uh, so. Um, <laughs> We went from we went from skydiving <laughs> to sleep in a recliner. Yeah. We'll go from uncrustables to kale. <laughs> right for the picking or leave it on the tree. I'll leave it kale. on the tree. Don't let me see it. I oh, don't like it. I love kale. Why? You can you can put it in your. Uh, You're about to say smoothie. And air crisper, oh, air or as Micah says, air fryer. Um, <laughs> you you could you could uh, just put it in your salad. I, kale salad. Uh, some people say it's a little bit rough, but I like I like kale salad salads. You can you can um, you can sauté it like a, like greens. Oh, it's so versatile. Raw, sure, hundred percent. Leave it on the tree. Oh, like in a so salad, good. like mm. it is, it is. It's wa- none of this like iceberg lettuce that it is just water with texture. I'll take iceberg lettuce over kale and yeah. salad any Come day. On. Yes, I don't I like iceberg is is what it is, but kale is you you use the word rough, and that's generous. Yeah. It mm-hmm. is like a the bitterness of it yeah. is unper. It's like bark. Mm-hmm. Put a little bit of uh, olive oil on it. Some you salt. haven't <laughs> no. You're good. Yeah. So raw, absolutely not. But like sautéed or yeah. uh, we make a we have like a. We did like this vegetable box, and kale came in one time. We were like, "What are we supposed to do with this?" And we turned it into a, a like it's not a stew, but like a soup. So we do kale yeah. and chicken and potato yeah. soup. Yeah, it holds up great in a soup. See, but you do, it's, but it's great vegetable. You put iceberg lettuce in a soup. Yeah. Mm. But in order to get the bitterness out of it, because I've I've made the mistake of just kind of putting it into the water and thinking like, you have to saute it first, and then put a little salt on it to get the bitterness out, and then we blend it, and then there's we, nothing wrong with bitterness. It, I mean, some. A little bit of bitterness is fine. A bowl full of it is too much. Mm-hmm. In a, like on its own, it, well, folks, it's unbearable. It's been a show. <laughs> yeah, Mike and I didn't agree on anything. No, so. and, and wow. you, hey, you thought you were going to finally get me one. You ended up you exposing you. Crustables are amazing. Bring the some pork, and, bring some pork skins. Skin. I'm, I'm all right. I'm good with pork. I did skins. look online. They, they only well anyway. I looked on Amazon. I, I think I need to. My mom knows where to get good right. ones. Well, I'm, I'm impressed. Ch- this is good. You're doing your your homework. Yeah, we'll get there. Uh, Sam, uh, before we wrap things up, uh, we always like to ask a guest if if you had one piece of advice for a listener mm-hmm. or somebody else. Uh, who's thinking about going in a church work professionally, what would that one piece of advice be? Um, you don't need to compare yourself to others and where mm. you come from. I think that some people say, wow, I need to have some incredible story or I need to be from, be the ninth generation, you know, or something like Megan who has some roots. I mean, you know, she like she can trace back to Walter and the gang actually. And, you know, and some people are like, oh, I need to have some crazy, amazing testimony. No, if you want to pursue church work, go for it. Mm. Um, And the church needs both. I remember having a great conversation with uh, somebody who we uh, actually, that we brought up earlier from Faith, uh, from Faith Las Vegas at the high school. And he said, oh, Sam, your story is incredible. I wish that you had, that I had something like that. I say, no, you don't. Mm. Your parents did it right. Mm. 
you were raised and you never had went a day without knowing Jesus. Wow. And so it doesn't matter if you're a newer convert or if you're, you know, or if you're there, just come see and be willing to be formed, mm. be willing so to be good. formed. That's what I would say. So don't, don't let however you perceive it, just come. God will use you in the capacity that he is going to, and you will be a blessing to wherever it is. And you remember, because remember, it's not, you're not the gift to the church. The church is Christ's gift to you. I heard it, someone mm. say that. Mm. And I think with that attitude combined with just being happy with your, the experiences that he's given you, you'll go far. Amen. Sam, uh, we'll miss all of our students. It, it is like kind of a very transitional place to be at the seminary. Uh, but man, some students are missed in the best way more than others. But like, you're going to be a great pastor. Yeah. And, and I'm just absolutely so grateful to, to have gotten to know you over the last couple of years and yeah, to see all the, to all the places you'll go. I heard that somewhere. Love that book. Great book. Go <laughs> the places book. you'll go. Certified banger, man. Good stuff. Oh. Well, Sam, uh, thank you for spending time with us on the podcast today. Uh, and thank you all for joining us uh, to hear about Sam's story of uh, his growing up and becoming a seminarian. Again, maybe you, you're, you can relate to Sam's story, but you definitely don't have to have a story like that. You could be ninth gen or you could have a, a wild and crazy uh, way of getting here. But nonetheless, if you're listening and you know, you've been thinking about church work a little bit and wondering if this is for you, don't think too long. Make sure you reach out to us, uh, fill out a request for information, uh, look out for our different visitation opportunities and events. Uh, come see us, come see what we're all about. Meet Sam, uh, meet our team. Uh, come see the studio. Uh, if that'll get you here, definitely come see the studio. Uh, and if you're sitting in your congregation and church work isn't for you, but you've been looking around and thinking to yourself, man, this person would be a good pastor, teacher, deacon as DCE or the like, uh, don't think, tell them because you could be that person that is that uh, influence that gets them to begin uh, to pursue it and becomes a church worker uh, in large part because of your urge as always uh thank you for listening like and subscribe and all that jazz and we'll see you next time under the fig tree take care